Fox Business host Maria Bartiromo is not thrilled with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and his remarks about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, in fact, here's what he said uh, in a statement that did not specifically name Green, McConnell said that her loony lies and conspiracy theories are cancer for the Republican Party and our country. I, I mean, look, uh, for McConnell, that's an incredibly strong statement. Uh, but here's the thing, right? Okay. Um, yes, that is cancer. Uh, but I would argue that the entire Republican Party itself is cancer. Uh, that is, uh, of course, destroying the country, uh, or at least, you know, getting people killed, um, and also keeping people from actually getting better wages and health care. And, and don't get me wrong, uh, corporate Democrats are also standing in, in, in the way of, of getting, you know, universal health care. But, like, come on. It's kind of true. <laughs> it's true what he said. Uh, but anyway, he continues by saying... Uh, somebody who suggested that perhaps no airplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, so 9-11 truther, uh, uh, that, that horrifying school shootings were pre-staged, um, and the Clintons crashed JFK Jr.'s airplane is not living in reality. Again, so I hate this story because Mitch McConnell actually makes good points. And he's right. And he's absolutely right. Uh, let's not forget some of our other hits, though, of course, uh, like about the Jewish space laser run by the Rothschilds that starts forest fires and are supporting, of course, violent acts against uh, Nancy Pelosi. So she's nuts. And that's very, very clear. Um, and McConnell, as you as you see, called her out. So now Maria Bartiromo is one of the biggest boosters of, you know, election conspiracy lies and, and conspiracy theories. And so, I don't know, I, I guess she felt maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit called out by that. And uh, she was not happy. In fact, she had a guest on and here, here's, here's what, here's what they said. Here's what that conversation. Well, there's a lot of uh, one-sidedness. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell right. is slamming your colleague, freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor right. Greene. The Congresswoman responded on Twitter saying this, the real cancer for the Republican Party is weak Republicans who only know how to lose gracefully. Congresswoman, there is a push to have her removed from committee assignments now. What can you tell us about what's going on within the GOP here? Well, I can say, you know, we're trying, we've got to rebuild the Republican Party after the events of January 6th. I've been a really strong voice on this. Um, we don't have room for QAnon conspiracy theorists. Um, we don't have room to put ourselves in another constitutional crisis again. But there are crazies on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we've seen that. Um, you know, it's not just Republicans that have our own issues. Re Democrats have them, too. We've seen Maxine Waters uh, tell folks to go and threaten and, and harm members of the Trump administration, right? Um, we've seen crazies on both sides of the aisle. Um, we do have to, I think, address some of these issues. But, you know, some of these things, and I'm learning about them today and this week, too, were said before she was elected and Georgia voters still elected her. Um, just a few years ago, we saw Democrat, another Democrat from Georgia, uh, Cynthia McKinney, uh, assault a Capitol Hill police officer and Nothing was done after that either. So, well, that you make a good point because Marjorie Taylor mm -hmm. Greene is an elected official. She was elected right. by her constituents. Right. And we know what Maxine Waters said back in 2020. Maxine Waters mm -hmm. went in front of a podium and said, if you're in the movies, if you're in a restaurant, if you're at the gas station yes. and you see Trump officials get in their face, tell them Correct. to get out, that they're not wanted here. Maxine Waters said all of that, get in their face, yes. was her comments. Where was Mitch McConnell then? Was she a kid? Did Mitch right. McConnell call her a cancer to the republic? And then same thing with Democrats. Um, they didn't hold their own accountable as well. I mean, there has been rhetoric on both sides of the aisle. Uh, it's been deeply troubling. This is one of the reasons we are where we are today. We both sides, everybody. It's both sides. Look at us on Fox News saying both sides. Just all the time, the whole time, the whole segment. That's all that was said. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we kind of got a little bit of a problem. But both sides, both sides, both sides. Yes, I realize that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is an insane conspiracy theorist who, you know, back to, who, who liked to comment uh, about somebody putting a bullet in, in Nancy Pelosi's skull. What are you talking about? Both sides, both sides. Nancy, uh, 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 Maxine Waters once told somebody to get in, get in a Trump official's face while, while they're eating dinner. Can you imagine? It's the same. It's 100% the same. I don't see a difference between either of these two things. That's a fucking idiot. And that's what it is. 
Are you serious? The whataboutism here and the and the equivocation is sad and pathetic. You, you really want to compare somebody who, who spread dangerous conspiracies like Pizzagate and the news one. You, you ever heard of Frazzle Drip? Frazzle Drip, uh, which says at some point, and I can't even give you the entire details for this, right? Um, I, I, it basically alleges that at some point Hillary Clinton was filmed wearing a girl's face that she had cut off. Like, this is like Silence of the Lambs, okay? It did, in order to scare her so that she could later drink her blood. This is ridiculous. This is insane. This gets people hurt. This gets people killed, okay? But again, saying Trump supporter, uh, you know, going to a, a, a Trump official and saying, we don't like what you're doing in this country during their fancy state dinner. Well, that's somehow equivocating or, or uh, equivalent to, oh, did you know that uh, Hillary Clinton's deep state and eat babies? Uh, and uh, maybe somebody should stop her with Second Amendment solutions. Are you making that? Are you making that comparison? Why would you make that comparison? That's dumb. Look, I don't even like, I'm not even, my, my politics are to the left of Maxine Waters. I have my own issues with, you know, disagreeing with some of what she says. And, and I would be one to say, to, to ask her tough questions and, and, and to give her pushback, okay? Um, but like, trying to equivocate with her, her with, with, with Marjorie Taylor Greene and some of the stuff that she's espoused, it's insane. Come on. And here's the thing, right? The camp, the, the 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 both sides here. I mean, let's look at both sides, okay? So again, the the both sides that we could the, the, the closest thing that we can draw a comparison to is the January 6th Capitol rights uh, insurrection versus BLM protests. Now you hear conservatives saying all the time, BLM, 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 what about BLM? They burned down entire cities. Did they really? It was like a maybe a couple of buildings and a car, smash some windows. That sucks. I, I disavow all that. I'm not. I'm not in favor of that. Um, but like to equip to 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 say, like I don't know. The, the, there's a little hyperbole here when you say I can't believe BLM burnt down cities. What city is burnt down? Show me. Show me in the. Show me in the map. What city is burnt down? Oh, you, you, you can't because it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Uh, in fact, in reality, BLM has had protests all around the world. Okay, demonstrations. Millions and millions of people are involved, right? Out of all of that and all the violence that, and, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw shade on, on, you know, CNN as well and these news outlets that only focused on the destruction and the violence which was a very, very small part. 93% of the BLM protests were peaceful. It, that's it. Now, were there issues sometimes with outside agitators? Yep, I talked about that. In many instances, also, you had police that would inflame and create violence among the protests by being too aggressive, pushing too hard. There were, there were stories of protesters being just like, picked up randomly off the street and dumped somewhere else. I mean, this is crazy stuff, all right? But no, all they want to talk about is some windows were smashed, which again, not good, right? There were fires, also not good. But again, there was a tiny fraction, and yet they want to compare that to right-wing violence overall in this country. And the Capitol insurrection, they also smashed windows. Yes, they did. Uh, they were also within minutes of actually, uh, you know, sometimes within a few feet of Congress people, and you know, thankfully they didn't get, uh, they they didn't they didn't get those people, right? Because who knows what would have happened? All right, uh, and the thing is, overall, when you look at violence between right and left, overwhelmingly in this country, the right wing is way more violent, massively violent. Um, again, you we can go back and look at some of the studies that show that overall right-wing domestic terrorism, more people have died from right-wing domestic terrorism 
than left-wing or Islamic terrorism, anything like that. Uh, and so, seriously, there's, there's no comparison here. All right, there's, there's absolutely no comparison. Uh, not only that, but that, look, they've been driven by dangerous conspiracy theories, media outlets like Fox News uh, that continue to spread misinformation that inflames people. Uh, Maria Bartiromo, again, one of the biggest proponents of the big lie about the election, and she has the audacity to sit there in both sides. All right? But understand, this is, this is a small reflection of what's going on within the Republican Party in general, okay? Because here's the thing. Mitch McConnell and the Republican establishment, they're not profiting off Trump anymore. It's not profitable to back Trump, right, and Trumpism. It, it's, not a, it's not a political winner because it inflames the other side, and it gets more people from the other side to turn out, right? So Mitch McConnell, since it's a loser now, well, he wants nothing to do with it. And Marjorie Taylor Greene is an example of Trumpism to the extreme. And you know what? That is not the fringe of the Republican Party. It's not anymore. It is the Republican Party. That's who they are. It, as much as Mitch McConnell is trying to distance himself and his party from it, it, it is who they are at their core. And so Mitch McConnell's going to have a really difficult time doing this. So understand, too, that Mitch McConnell's only aspiration in this life is to stay in power and to funnel money to himself and his donors. That's what the that's what the political arm of the Republican Party is all about. It exists as a money funneling scheme to the wealthiest Americans. That's all they do. But they, in order to keep their coalition of people who are, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, a lot of their base tends to be reactionaries or racists or xenophobes um, and, and people driven by wedge issues, too. Uh, for example, these wedge issues are generally guns, abortion, religion, and of course, conspiracy theories, all right? And so he's got to keep those people together. And so doing those dog whistles to a, to a certain point is acceptable within the party. But now it's gotten to a point where it's put him and his, his life and his, you know, colleagues' life, lives possibly in danger, and it's at this moment where he says, oh, boy, that's too much for me. All I want to do is get rich, and all I want to do is keep myself into power. This is, this is not what I signed up for with Trumpism. And so he's got to go out, and he's got to chastise the crazies. And that's who they're electing into office. Marta Romo is absolutely right. She points out, she was elected. She was elected. Yep, she was elected. So this is, and, and she got pretty large numbers in her district because she represents those people and that's it. Uh, and so that's, that's the situation in the Republican party now. And it's not so much a split. It's just a reaffirmation of something that's already been there. The division between the, the voters of the Republican party and the, and, and, and the people at the top, who only exist to fleece the other, you know, the, 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 the voters. So it is really interesting. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.